our big inspiration comes from nature, and that is, you look at solar energy really provides the Earth with its main energy source, it actually powers the ecosystem. So you think about our developed environment and then how we use energy, and can we reflect from that, can we learn from that, can we develop better technologies. So we've built this incredibly impressive modern world with all these wonderful things in it, uh, but we've done it by digging things out of the ground and burning them. It's really all solar energy, but it's just solar energy that's been uh, it's been stored for a long time. So how can we get from, from there to, to a more sustainable system? So can we do what plants do? Instead of burning fuels to produce CO2, can we take CO2 and put energy and produce those fuels that we like so much, that fly airplanes and heat this room and do other, all those useful things? These are photosynthetic microorganisms. They work like plants. They take solar energy and CO2 and they produce useful products. And perhaps most excitingly, some of the products they produce are fatty, uh, materials, lipids, that, that look a lot like these, these fuels that we're addicted to, these oil and this sort of thing. These guys do a good job of that, but they're fussy. Can we give them the wavelengths they need? Can we give them the fluids they need, the CO2 they need, and keep them happy so they're productive? The CO2 is a global issue. Uh, it doesn't respect boundaries or tariffs or all these sorts of things. It really is a question of, of how can we work together? And you know, to be fair, our global record of working together isn't great. Canada is, a, is an energy superpower, and, and I think we need to uh, pull our weight and really demonstrate leadership uh, in this larger question of CO2 and how we can and how we can produce new technologies to uh, to do a better job.